Uh, today, we're going to go over the root cause of high blood pressure and how increasing your intake of one important nutrient can prevent or reverse high blood pressure and may be more effective than most blood pressure medications. Now, if you're watching this video, you or someone you love probably has high blood pressure. And if so, you're not alone. The prevalence of high blood pressure in the United States is staggering. About 45% of adults of any age in the U.S. have high blood pressure. And if you look at adults over 60, that number is closer to 75%. Three out of every four adults in their later years are going to get high blood pressure. Over 1.3 billion people worldwide. Now the question is, why are so many of us, me included, getting high blood pressure as we age? And the answer is, is that we're all deficient in one important nutrient, and that nutrient is potassium. But to understand why potassium deficiency is so rampant and how replacing it can do such an amazing job on your blood pressure, you've got to understand a little bit of the physiology of how the human body works. So we're going to get into that right now, and I'm going to explain how your kidney regulates blood pressure and why low potassium levels trick the kidney into cranking up your blood pressure to the point where you need medications. I'm also going to explain how most major blood pressure medications including the seven most commonly prescribed classes of medications, all work downstream from potassium deficiency, meaning that if you replace the potassium, you may not need most of the commonly prescribed medications. Now, as always, talk to your doctor before you make any changes, but I hope you enjoy this video. Let's get into the science right now. So let's look at how your kidneys regulate blood pressure. Well, it starts with a hormone called renin, which is secreted by the kidney, and that activates angiotensinogen, which is an inactive precursor hormone secreted by the liver. Well, when renin hits angiotensinogen, it converts it into angiotensin 1. Now, this is the first step in high blood pressure. Angiotensin 1 is cleaved by angiotensin converting enzyme into the active molecule angiotensin 2. And this is where blood pressure really starts to take shape. Because angiotensin 2 tells the blood vessels to constrict, to close down, and it increases that tone that jacks up your blood pressure. But that's not all. Angiotensin 2 also goes over to the adrenal gland, where it tells the adrenal gland to start secreting a hormone called aldosterone. Now, aldosterone goes back to the kidney and tells it to retain sodium. So now you've got this cascade where the secretion of renin has triggered all these steps that lead to two things that raise your blood pressure. One is increasing vascular tone by constricting those blood vessels, and the other is retaining sodium. And the combination of increasing tone and retaining sodium means your blood pressure starts to go up. And if the renin system is constantly triggered, then your blood pressure is going to continue to go up and you're going to continue to need more medications. And what medications are most people taking? They're taking medications that act at different steps in this pathway. Let's start with renin secretion. Well, beta blockers, that includes atenolol, metoprolol, carvedilol, they inhibit the secretion of renin. Then we've got aliskyrid, which is a direct renin inhibitor. Then we've got the angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors, and those are the ACE inhibitors like lisinopril or captopril or enalapril. Then we've got the angiotensin receptor blockers, which block the action of angiotensin 2 on the blood vessels. That's losartan, candesartan, other medications that work along that same step. And then finally, we've got spironolactone, which works to block the effect of aldosterone. And we've got other diuretics like thiazide diuretics and Lasix that also work at those downstream steps. So all in all, you've got seven classes of medication encompassing dozens of blood pressure medications that are all there to intervene in different steps along the pathway of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system or the RAAS or RAS. So it's pretty clear that if we could turn off the secretion of renin, we would do a really good job at preventing the age-related development of high blood pressure. So the question is, what is this trigger that's telling the kidney to secrete renin as we age? And the answer is, 
it's the low potassium in our diet. You see, the average American only gets about 2,300 milligrams of potassium a day, whereas experts recommend that we get upwards of 4,700 milligrams of potassium a day. And our ancestors got way more than that, anywhere from 8,000 to 10,000 milligrams of potassium on a hunter-gatherer diet. And it's these low potassium levels in our diet that are telling the kidney to secrete renin. You see, your kidneys have learned over millions of years to use potassium as a way to measure or monitor your blood volume levels. And it's because our prehistoric diet had so much potassium in it. And when we take away that potassium, our kidney thinks we don't have enough blood volume. So we should crank up the pressure. We should constrict the arteries. We should uh, retain sodium, all in an effort to maintain blood volumes. But the reality is we have good blood volumes. Our blood pressure is fine. It's that we don't have enough potassium. And that potassium is the signal to the kidney to say whether or not we should start to secrete renin and crank up that renin angiotensin aldosterone system and have that effect on the blood pressure. So let's look at the research and see what happens when we replace potassium, either through diet or supplementation. Well, here's a look at the results of a meta-analysis of about 20 trials looking at potassium supplementation for hypertension. As you can see, all of the data is on the left side of this vertical line, which means that potassium has had a significant impact on hypertension. And if that's not enough, here's another meta-analysis looking at another dozen trials showing the same thing. And if we compare the amount of blood pressure lowering across these trials to most of the major blood pressure medications that target the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, what we see is that the amount of blood pressure lowering is roughly the same. You're getting about eight points of blood pressure reduction from either potassium supplementation or from the medications, but the potassium is fixing the root cause of the problem. So as we replace that potassium, we anticipate that we're not going to see that system continually upregulated. We're not going to need one, then two, then three, then four blood pressure medications. And by fixing the root cause of the problem, you're also lowering the risk of some of those downstream diseases like stroke, heart attack, um, kidney failure, that happen with low potassium levels. So if you're looking for a way to prevent or treat high blood pressure without taking a bunch of medications, it's totally reasonable to start looking at how much potassium you're getting through nutrition or supplementation. I'll leave some links in the description to some great educational resources that you can use to understand how much potassium is in certain foods and easy ways that you can start to incorporate more potassium-rich foods into your diet. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.